Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live online seminar, Emotional Eating is Killing You. It's good to see everybody that's here live, and of course, we're going to uh, record this so you can watch it later, and those of you that are watching later on the recording, welcome, and uh, we've got a bunch of exciting and great content for you tonight. We're going to do a little Q&A uh, with my good friend, life coach, health coach, uh, Matt Maddox, who's here with me, and we're going to cover a few topics on emotional eating, cover some questions. And we're going to try to keep it to 30 minutes and deliver as much content as we possibly can. And I would say hello and greet and uh, introduce my good friend, Matt Maddox, who's going to be answering a lot of the questions and bringing some content. Man, to I'm tonight. well. Tonight, and I Matt. want to say thank you, Mike, to all of those that are watching live tonight. I mm -hmm. know you're busy, uh, but tonight's a very important subject that we believe is literally going to save people's life. It's going to give people hope, help bring some healing to people. Mike, this is a real issue, and we're humbled and grateful that God has chosen us. We lead a health and weight loss company called My Health 90 that's helping hundreds of people right, right now and eventually thousands and millions. But I do want to say a shout out to not only those that are watching live, but to those that are watching later on the archive because uh, this show is being recorded and you'll be able to watch it later. You can share it with anybody that you want. Let's say you're watching tonight. You're like, oh, my goodness, I need to share this with my Aunt Susie. Hi, Aunt Susie. Welcome to the show. Uh, send it to her. You know, send it to your friends. Put it out on your Facebook and your Twitter and text it to people and say, you got to watch this show. It'll really encourage you. Because at the end of the day, my friends, we're here to seriously serve. And uh, one more thing, we do have a chat box. And you guys are welcome to ask questions. Uh, give feedback, share comments, and we always welcome that and like that. And like Mike said, we got a lot of uh, exciting questions centered around emotional eating. Here we go. Awesome. Well, emotional eating is a topic some people are familiar with and other people aren't. So I'm going to start with a very basic question. What is Emotional eating, can you give a definition, a description for our viewers? You know, my emotional eating is when people turn to food as a result of depression, a loss, stress, fear, anxiety, uh, maybe something's going on in the family, maybe something's going on in the job. And so what people that battle emotional eating, uh, they turn to food for comfort. Uh, whether it's consciously and sometimes even unconsciously, some people are so habitual with emotional eating that if you told them they had a problem with it, that they would be shocked. They wouldn't even realize it because they subconsciously do it, you know. And so I think it's just people that literally use food as a coping mechanism uh, that's usually triggered by stress or negative emotions. We're going to talk a lot today about negative emotions and how that plays into uh, emotional eating. Good. Well, let's ask this then. How does, how does a person know, how would you know if someone has a problem uh, with emotional eating? What may be some key indicators or some things? Well, that you, you know, Mike, about? honestly, this, there, he, here's the real issue. The real issue is a lot of people obviously don't want to admit that they, they just think, oh, I love ice cream or, oh, don't – don't mess with me. I love my potato chips. And if I'm having a bad day, I deserve pizza. Or, you know, usually when people are stressed, uh, they turn to foods such as sweets, chips, pizza, ice cream, and even alcohol, you know. And so how, how you know you have a problem yeah. is when your first response after a bad day is food after maybe something tragic that happens, it's food, or it doesn't have to be like tragic, but you know, maybe you get in a fight with your husband and you know, or maybe your kid does something that really disturbs you. You know, we go to the doctor and what do we usually do? You know, we, we go get ice cream afterwards. Our kid breaks their arm, we're like, oh, we're gonna get you ice cream, Johnny, you know, or you know, we go through a breakup and what do you do? You sit there with your girlfriends and you eat ice cream all night. You know, you use food as a reward. All the, you know, let's say a sports team wins the game. Hey, we're going to go out, eat, and celebrate. You know, we use food so much. I actually wrote about this in my book, Just Juice It, on how to protect our children from emotional eating. 
Uh, and I think we as parents have a responsibility not to, thank you, Mike. We have a responsibility not to, um, not to uh, cause these habits within our children. I remember when my son, you know, we would sit down and watch a movie and we could have just had dinner and like subconsciously, he'd be like, dad, I'm hungry. And one day I realized I'm a health coach, so I'm very in tune to this kind of stuff. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to get you anything to eat. Nothing. He was like, why? I'm hungry. I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, you know, you, you're getting in a habit of every time you sit down to watch something, you think you need to eat. And we're going to prove to your body right now that your mind is tougher and you don't need to eat. So, like, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example, Mike. There you make a list of every reason why you eat bad and why you deserve it. Because here's what happens. When we're low, when we're feeling depressed, when we're, when we're stressed, when, you know, we get fired or, you know, we find out our husband is cheating on us or whatever, you know, our kid ran away. You know, we, we feel like we deserve it, right? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I deserve this cake. I, I worked hard all week or I didn't sleep good last night. I need something that will give me energy, you know? So even people that are hooked on energy drinks, they're like, well, you know what? I deserve this. You know, I work hard. And so we use all this like we have self-limiting beliefs when it comes to emotional eating. So I know I could really, Mike, obviously I'm very passionate about this. So I know we got some more questions. So let me right, right. let's get to some more of those questions there. Well, you, you mentioned a couple of what I would call causes uh, of emotional eating. Uh, can you can you elaborate a little bit and maybe expound some other causes that like what causes the situation where people tend to eat for emotional reasons? Yeah, you know, Mike, seriously, as a life coach, as somebody that I've been in the trenches, and I know, Mike, you can relate with this as well. You and I work with overweight people every day. I know the real battle. I know it. I know it. I know the battle that some people face. I literally wake up in the morning and live every second of my life until I go to bed trying to help people lose weight, regain confidence, and heal emotionally because the heart, the mind, and the soul of an obese person, nobody really knows the amount of depression, the amount of pain, psychological pain, the amount, how low they feel about themselves, how many of them are think have suicidal thoughts. How many of them hate the way they feel in their body, even when they're getting dressed, when all their friends want to go to the pool, you know, whether they're going to a theme park and they know they can't fit into the roller coaster. I've been in line with a friend. I've been in line at a, at a, at a roller coaster where we waited an hour and a half and we get, went to go get on and he literally couldn't fit in it because he was too big. And the embarrassment, the look on his face. It broke my heart. I mean, some people were laughing. I mean, you know, naturally it might be funny to some. My heart was broken. I was like, you know, because like here you got all these people looking at you and, you know, he's embarrassed. So, I mean, Mike, I could go on and on. But let me tell you the causes or the signs of what I would call negative, the top five negative emotions that can lead to emotional eating. Number one is depression. Mike, if people knew how real depression was, anxiety, you know, worry about finances or the job situation, you don't know if you're going to keep your job or lose your job, you know, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to, you know, what am I going to do about my kid? You know, we got single moms. I get, shout out to all the single moms out there doing it, man. You know, stress, Mike, stress is killing us. Stress, I read something yesterday. Uh, that 75% of overeating is because of emotions. That literally most people eat wow. because of stress. And then fear and then bitterness. Those five emotions, Mike, depression, anxiety, stress, fear, bitterness. When you don't conquer those things in your life, you, you're going to have a battle with turning to potato chips, pizza, ice cream, food, alcohol, whatever it may be. That's good. Hey, just kind of to clarify something, you, you, we mentioned, you know, uh, emotional eating. We also mentioned uh, obesity and, and overweight people. But just to clarify, everyone who emotionally eats isn't necessarily That's exactly overweight. exactly right. No, Mike, this goes to, then this goes to eating disorders. 
you know, anemic, bulimic, you know, in other words, you're right. I know people that are skinny as a rail, that have major eating disorders, that have major anxiety, depression, fear. That's why like, okay, you ready for this? In our company, My Health 90, notice like even in the name of our company, the word weight loss isn't there. Now we help people lose weight, but our number one focus is health. Right. Mike, we've got skinny people in our My Health 90 program that are in it because they're not healthy. You know, they, they don't sleep like they should, they don't eat like they should, they're stressed out, they're out of control, they have no discipline, they don't exercise, they're on medication, so you're right. It's not just obesity. I know people that have emotional eating triggers or emotional eating weaknesses uh, that are skinny. So, good point, I'm glad you brought that up, man. And, and, I, and I bring that up because the one of the questions that we have are uh, is relates to you know bad health and those sort of things. And, and we mentioned the the signs of negative emotions. What what how would how would I know? I mean, what what are some maybe my loved one? What are some key things that I would look for? Maybe behaviors or or signs. And you mentioned the emotions, uh, the five emotions that are negative that could lead to uh, emotional eating. What are some things? Some maybe behaviors. Like we can't get through for? life without heartbreak. We can't get through life without trouble, without yeah. pressure, without stress. We can't get through life without difficulties, setbacks, pain. And so I guess the first sign, Mike, would be when you're in a low, when you had a horrible day, what are your habits? This is why I believe in journaling. I believe that it is so wise, we teach our people to do this in My Health 90, to journal their feelings. Journal how you feel after you eat. Journal why you ate. Most people, Mike, are not aware. I call it being aware. And when you're not aware of your emotions and, okay, why are you feeling this way? What triggered it? Why do you want to eat potato chips? You know, I, I did a coaching with a client that had a struggle with emotional eating. And he said, I, I, would, I would eat just a whole bag of potato chips out of anger because I felt control. I felt in control. You know, Mike, people that have been raped, abused, molested, uh, rejected, betrayed, you know, all of these different emotions. So signs would be, Mike, turning to food as a coping mechanism. And I'm going to give you 21 ways, 21. If I can get through them, I'm going to give you 21 ways to overcome food addiction from my own experience and what I've trained and taught others to do. I didn't get it out of a book. I didn't get it out of Google. This came out of my own life, watching people go through it, beat it. You know, Mike, you know, we interviewed somebody on Fuel for Success that when she was losing weight and breaking food addiction, she craved potato chips so bad, she would curl up in the fetal position, weeping, screaming, because the addiction to potato chips was that strong. And I mean, literally, like told it right on our show that she would be in the fetal position, screaming in agony because she was at war trying, like, it's a drug, Mike. Food addiction is like a drug to some people. It's not enough to say, oh, come on, get some control over your life. I really believe, Mike, all weight gain and emotional eating, it all comes back to our emotions. So when you see somebody depressed, that's a sign. When you see somebody uh, angry all the time, that's moody, that's easily frustrated, that's tense, that's uh, worried, you know, frigidity, real, uh, uh, just seems to be fearful a lot or bitter, resentful. Right. These things, Mike, are warning signs that if you're not careful and you don't have some practical good habits to fight off these negative emotions, it, 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 and sad as it is, Mike, food and alcohol are what people turn to. And of course, even drugs. Right. So... True, uh, and, and of course we know the 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 you know the bad side of, of drugs and alcohol and even even severe obesity and, and those sort of things. But other than that, I mean, how can you, can you expound a little bit on how emotional eating is bad for your health? Well, of Overall. course, Mike, because here's the deal. Um, you know, our body, it's it, it, life all comes back to energy. To have good energy, you've got to have healthy habits, right? To have a healthy body, which means you sleep right. good, you feel good, you don't get sick, you've got a strong immune system, you have energy, your life isn't dependent on energy drinks, 
you know, you have discipline, you eat nutritionist, clean, organic food, you know, you eat raw, you juice, you drink water, you're in control. So, you know, Mike, when, when, when you live a healthy lifestyle, they're, they're tied together. You ready for this? They're so tied together, the body and the emotions. Because I know people that because of their emotions, they're sick. Because of their emotions, they're, they, they gain weight. Because of their emotions, they, they eat bad. When you eat bad, it leads to sickness and diseases. When you don't take care of your body, it leads to, you know, it leads to, to, to struggle. It leads to pain. It leads to depression. But when you exercise and you drink water and you think positive and you're happy and, and you release bitterness and, you know, you conquer those negative emotions, my friend, you know, you're going to feel better. And when you feel better, you're healthier. You know, laughter is like medicine for the soul. Like there is a big difference between people that are light, they're cheerful, they're in a good mood, they have good vibes. Depression weighs people down, Mike. It leads to, it literally leads to death. Stress kills people. Stress, like people get cancer because of stress. People develop uh, a, immune, sure. they become uh, immune to diseases because of stress. So Mike, like taking care of the body helps you emotionally and taking care of yourself emotionally helps the body. That's why in My Health 90, our company that we have, and I do, Strongly encourage you to take a look at it, you that are watching this webinar, because unlike anything else, we tell people all the time this is not a diet. Mike, we actually help people emotionally through the support we give them, the daily coaching, the daily the uh, encouragement, the daily motivation. Uh, we, get, we give them the tools to push past depression, emotional eating, fear, fear-based thoughts, negative thinking. You know how to heal from low self-esteem, lack of confidence, how to how to become more powerful, how to overcome, you know, when you had a bad day, you know, I love it because it, I see it happening. You know, people that are in our My Health 90 that when they had a bad day, they're going home and juicing. They're going home and getting on the treadmill and running. Yeah. Why not instead of abusing your body, why not just go take it out on the treadmill? Why not go just, you know, Grab some kale and some grapes and some spinach and some blueberries and some ginger. Mike, foods impact moods. One of the reasons why people continue to emotionally eat is because of the sugar, the starches, the carbs. It, it, it actually leads to depression. So rather than, then, you know, they say if you're in a hole, stop digging, right? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So obviously people that, you know, are struggling emotionally, whether they're bitter, they're angry, they're, they're hurt, they're depressed, they're lonely, they're fearful, they're worried, they're stressed, whatever it may be, Mike, pull out of it. Never stay down. Never allow yourself to go deeper and deeper. That's why I say you don't need the ice cream. You don't need, like if your boyfriend tells you you're fat, you don't need the ice cream. You don't need the notebook. You know what you need? You need to love yourself enough to say he's got, you know, the best, the best revenge is, is massive success. Like love yourself enough to say that person is unworthy of me. And, you know, Mike, you'd be surprised how many girls struggle with the emotional eating because their dad told them they were fat. Or because a boyfriend told them they were fat. Okay, so what? Other people's opinion doesn't affect your reality. I know it hurt. I know it hurt. And I hurt for you. But don't ever let anybody put labels on you. And it's time for you to start loving yourself. Loving yourself to prove your dad and your boyfriend wrong. But not out of hate. Out of self-love that, hey, I'm good enough to look my best and to be my best. Mike, I could go off on this subject. That's good. That's good. Hey, listen, we're uh, we got we got two directions to go here because we're, we're at about 19 minutes. We promised our viewers uh, 30 minutes and, and we want to try to keep, you know, and respect their time. Uh, I want to jump into, you know, how a person can overcome and the things of that nature. Do you have a quick story that you want to share first of, of somebody that you know who's had a problem with with emotional eating? No, and Mike, how they I have it? many stories. I, I personally 
struggle with emotional eating when I first became a single parent because I love my son so much. Mike, I went into the deepest valleys of depression when I would drop my son off at his mom's. I mean the deepest. People have no clue. I don't, I'm not a depressed person. I'm, I'm one of the most vibrant, cheerful, happy-go-lucky, truly in a good mood, positive dude you'll meet. True. But bro, I went through the valley of depression that led to just bad emotional. I gained probably 40 pounds. I ate all kinds of junk. I would just go home and it would be so quiet. You walk in the house and it's so quiet and I can smell my son and I grab his shirt and I would just lay in my bed and hold his shirt. I mean, I went through some stuff, man. You know, um, and dude, I turned to like, you know, it, like what anybody else would. And I had to, I had to get control of it, Mike. And what I'm about to give over the next 10 minutes is what pulled me out of it. So now I'm, I miss him like crazy, but I don't go turn to ice cream or pizza or french fries or a burger. You know, I found other things that have helped me pull out of those bad patterns. So the the emotion can still be there. The trigger to eat isn't necessarily The pain is there. here. I miss my son. The loneliness, it's still here. The like, ah, oh, I just, it's quiet, right? But I have learned how to conquer that without food. Hear me? Without turning like I'm in, I'm in 100% control of food now, a hundred percent. I mean, a hundred percent. Well, I'm sure that everyone watching this right now wants to know how. And so let's uh, let's go ahead and 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 figure out where the rubber meets the road here. And you talked about your own struggles and the and the, the experience that you've had. You've got some 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 things that someone can do. What is your best advice right now to somebody watching? Uh, what is your best advice? Uh, for them to overcome. I tell our people eating. in My Health 90, our members, drive people nuts with optimism. Become, literally get on people's nerves with your optimistic, enthusiastic, positive attitude. Like borderline annoying positive. Like thinking positive is, I know it's like, it's so simple, people miss it. But learning how to think positive thoughts is number one. Number two is practicing forgiveness. Mike, forgiveness is the mother of healing, my friend. One of the reasons why people emotionally eat is because of some type of pain in their past, and it's usually an area where they haven't let something go. I always tell people there's three people you need to forgive. You need to forgive God, you need to forgive others, and you need to forgive yourself. And maybe we, our next webinar will be about forgiveness because you know, I don't want anybody to misunderstand, but there's a lot of people that feel disappointed by God. There's a lot of people that have been crushed by others, parents, ex-spouses, children, friends, people you thought were friends, but you've got to live the life of forgiveness, the life of letting it go, the life of just no resentment, no hard feelings, no bitterness at all. Uh, when you get there, Mike, you become emotionally strong. You really do. My... My path of forgiveness brought so much healing and strength in my life. Number three is live in the present moment. I, and so what I learned was to get all of my energy in the now is stabilized me emotionally. It helped me stop hurting over the past. I didn't worry about the future. I really got into the now. I really got into this moment, like every single ounce of energy into right now. It did wonders for me. Number four is exercise every day. Mike, I started running. I started walking. I started biking. I started swimming. Man, going for a swim. Rather than coming home and being depressed, I would go run. I would literally come home and run. Because, Mike, people are missing out on the power of exercise. It doesn't just help you physically. It really helps you emotionally. Number five is and I didn't do good at this, and it, it affected me emotionally, would start getting good sleep. You've got to learn how the power of sleep and rest. Number six is associate, hear me loud and clear, with emotionally healthy people. See, one of the reasons why some of you are struggling with certain negative emotions is because you associate with people that carry that energy. Mike, I had to cut those people out. 
Nice to them, yes. Friendly, first class, absolutely. I had to pull back, though, from people that carried negative vibes. Right. Right. And I only surround myself with people that were enthusiastic, passionate, positive, healthy, love to juice, love to work out. And those closest to you determine your success. Right. You got to stop hanging out in the break room at work with all the complainers and all the thumb suckers and all the negative people that's always talking about how horrible the company is. Man, go out and get fresh air and take a walk and read a good book. Listen to some upbeat music, baby. So another thing that I would do, Mike, a little strategy for you single parents is I would leave to go take my son to his mom's. And I had like the most upbeat playlist on my iTunes and I would play it. So when I got back home, it would be like loud and I would walk in and I would make sure the lights were on and I would make sure that like, you know, believe it or not, that helped right, me. Right. Uh, number seven is feed your mind. You've got to feed your mind. Books, books, se books, seminars. Hey, if you've never read the book, Just Juice It, I actually have a whole chapter about emotional eating in there. Mike showed you. There it is. You can get it off Amazon. It's called Just Juice It. And even if you've read it, go buy it for somebody else and give it as a gift. Listen, number uh, eight is start giving and serving. Mike, I really believe one of the reasons why people never emotionally heal is because they don't start giving and serving. The way out of a rut, the way out of depression, the way out of just being stuck is to go serve. Mike, you know what I started doing? I started going and serving the homeless. It lifted my spirit. I started going hanging out with children that had cancer. I would literally go like do Play-Doh and Legos and cars and play hoops with 40 to 50 children at the Children's Cancer Center that have cancer. It, it had a way of carrying me emotionally when I would see little kids that have had 20 surgeries. Their mom works at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Their car barely runs. And I realized that, man, which leads me to my next point. And that's focus on gratitude. Mike, gratitude changed my life. I, I really believe that gratitude can lift you. It can heal you. It can make you emotionally well. Be a thankful person. Be the person that's just grateful to be alive. Be a person that's just so grateful. Be like, you know, just be grateful. Be grateful for every moment. Be grateful for the good times. Be grateful for all that's going right in your life. Mike, I literally would make a list of all that's going right, all the good, all the things I'm happy for. Doing that changed my focus, and where focus goes, energy flows. When you focus on the right things, my friends, I love what, what Mary said, gratitude fixes you from the inside out. Uh, I think I'm on number 10. Yeah. Um, you know, go to atmospheres that are full of energy. You know, in other words, it's, that's why it's good to go to the gym. It's good to go to church. It's good to go to groups, support groups, Bible studies, whatever, you know, mastermind groups, success groups. You know, don't, don't allow yourself to be a loner. I really like, you know, okay, I got to hurry, don't I? I really got to hurry. Uh, number 11 is love and accept yourself. Learn to love yourself more. Love your, I tell people all the time, you go get a massage or a pedicure. That's not selfish. That's a form of of self-love and that's healthy that's emotionally healthy to go and go buy yourself a nice shirt go and you know wash your car take good care of yourself men i tell people all the time when i did a deal to our my health 90 because i focus on low self-esteem hey you dress good take care of yourself even if you're a little overweight take care of yourself don't go out wrinkled clothes do your hair Guys, don't wear Brute 33 or Old Spice. Be better than that. Even if you're 60, be better than Brute 33 and Old Spice. Be better than it, my friends. Uh, so love yourself. Accept yourself. Love the good of you. Number 12, live your purpose and passion. Mike, you want to know what will bring emotional healing? Is living, <coughs> I'm getting excited, with passion and purpose. <laughs> live with passion be passionate yeah live with purpose like have a dream have a vision have goals have big goals you want to know what to help bring emotional healing go to mission 25 and serve with us um number 14 have fun know. you know what most people have forgotten how to do mike the art of having fun is almost gone laugh it's good to laugh I like spent 20 minutes tonight watching videos that made me laugh so hard I had tears coming down my face. It's healthy for me. 
Uh, number 15 is love, my friend. You got to get love and you got to get relationships. They say every, every human being needs eight meaningful touches a day. Man, touch, affection, uh, be around family, friends, you know, be, you know, don't lose your love and feeling is what I'm saying. Number 16, which brings me to a very important point, point Mike is speak affirmations. Now, tonight, for you watching this seminar, Mike and I are gonna give you a gift, okay? I actually wrote uh, for my Health 90 people called the 10 Affirmations for Emotional Healing. I wrote them, and we're gonna give them to you tonight. All you have to do is text this number that Mike's gonna put up, and as soon as you text it, it's going to show up on your phone. You can print it out, whatever. Mike, tell them how that goes. So go ahead and grab your phone and text the word healing to 727-341-5599. That's the word healing. And uh, you can see it right up there or over in the chat box either way. Text the word healing to 727-341-5599. And okay, Mike, before we go, how about our last five real quick? We got time? Our last five. Number sit number 17. Yeah, let's do it. Eat clean. Well, let me go back to speaking those affirmations. Let me give you a secret about that. The, there's a proverb yeah. that says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Man, you've got to learn to start speaking life instead of speaking, oh, I've had a crappy day. Don't even say that. Don't say, oh, can't believe there's a traffic jam. Yeah. Like, don't say that. I'm running late. Oh, I can't believe I'm running late. I can't believe I overslept. If you overslept, you overslept. What are you going to do about it? Don't speak that out into your energy and into the atmosphere. Speaking affirmations might change you. They change your energy. They change your outlook. They change your mind. All right. So number 17, eat clean, eat healthy, and juice every single day. Because when you juice, juicing is the secret to emotional healing. Because juicing is going to impact your mood. It's going to put you in a better mood. You're going to sleep better at night. You're going to have more energy. You're going to lose weight. <coughs> if you lose weight, if you lose weight, my friends, you are going to be better emotionally. You feel better about your body, and juicing is the secret for that. And it's a proven fact that when you eat healthy foods, clean, when you eat clean and you drink a lot of water and you juice, you're going to be in a better mood. You're going to be in a better mood. I've never met anybody who was healthy and juiced and exercised that was depressed. Never. Never. Okay. Uh, number 18, drink lots of, lots of water with lemon because that's very purifying and cleansing as well. Number 19 is meditate and visualize the future. I'm a big believer in meditation. I practice it every day. 20 minutes of silence where I go into gratitude in my mind and I go into visualizing the future and dreaming big and thinking about future dreams and what have you. Number 20, I'm blessed for this, Mike. This is definitely a secret to emotional healing is getting sunshine. You need sun. You need it every day. You need to be out in nature. And I know some of you are battling with the winter right now and I hurt for you. But as soon as that snow goes, baby, First time we know, Mike, we don't go to the lake enough. We don't go to the river enough. We don't canoe enough. We don't paddleboard enough. We don't go on the boat enough. We don't build as enough fires. We don't hike enough. Where's the nature folks at? You know, when's the last time you've been sledding? Okay, so I know it's I'm bad and it's cold, but bundle up and go sled. Climb those hills. Walk up those hills and walk up them with passion. All right, and then last but not least, you want to know the real secret to overcoming emotional eating? The real secret, the mother of them all. Are you ready? Can I get a drum? Can I get a drum roll? The real secret of overcoming emotional eating is to join my health 90. I said all this. I said, this is where you sign off real quick. No. Hey, I said all that to say this. Friends, <laughs> if you joined my health 90, here's what you would get. You would get a meal plan. You would get uh access to mike and i every day for 90 days you would get unbelievable support from all the my health 90 community you would get encouragement and the three things that every unhealthy overweight person needs what are they every every overweight and health unhealthy person needs coaching so we're your personal trainers every day for 90 days 
We're like in your life every day. You need training. You need coaching. You need someone to push you and tell you, no, it's right. not healthy to have a cheeseburger. It's not healthy to eat French fries as long as you don't put salt on them. Say, so, well, I had ketchup. Doesn't ketchup have tomatoes in it? No, you need a coach, baby. All right. And then the second thing you get is you get motivation. You get jacked up motivation. Our boy Jerry Burns, I don't know if he's on tonight. He's He's been in my health 90, 39 days. He's lost 30 pounds. But it's not just the weight loss. It's the emotional like revival that's going on in his life, his confidence, his passion, his yeah, self-esteem. Yes. The depression is gone. His joy is back. His kick is back. His step is back. So you get motivation, but most importantly is accountability. We're going to keep you accountable because we're not going to let you cheat. We're not going to let you binge eat. We're not going to let you fall off. We're not going to let you stay overweight. We're not going to let you die. We're not going to let you stay sick. And listen, you're going to get access to Mike and I and unbelievable for 90 straight days. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it on planet Earth. So here's what I want you to do. I want every one of you to at least go to the website tonight. That's step one. Go to the website and just look at it, okay? Take a look at it, myhealth90.com. Number two, straight up, I'm honest, look in my eyes. You want me to call you and you just want to ask questions without feeling any pressure that I'm going to sell you, okay? And you just want to call and say, hey, I just want to pick your brain and see if this is a fit for me. It may not be a fit for you. I personally believe every breathing person on the planet needs to be in my health 90. I straight up, I believe children need to be in it. I got my son going through it. I believe teenagers need to be in it. I believe married couples need to be in it. I believe every if you're if you're a pound overweight you need it. If if you're not everybody needs it. That's all there is to it. So let me just Mike. We went a little over time, but it's okay. Uh, so thanks so much, everybody, and have a great night. Good night. And God bless America.